In the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association Relief News from South Africa, in late April 2019, relentless torrential rain and flooding ravaged through the province of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. Schools, homes, churches, other buildings and roads were severely damaged, with thousands of people displaced. Sadly, 71 people lost their lives. Our association members from the United States lovingly sent 10,000 US dollars to our association's Johannesburg Center to help care for the needs of the flood afflicted. Our master also caringly sent an extra 10,000 US dollars to help the most vulnerable, the elderly and children with all love and sorrowful prayers in God's mercy. May all afflicted regain their normal life speedily. On July 24, 2019, our relief team of two from Johannesburg traveled for a third time to the town of Izingalwini in KwaZulu-Natal to deliver emergency items. Non-perishable vegan food supplies were purchased from a local wholesaler who kindly arranged for a crew of six people to assist our team with their distribution. The goods included much needed rice, beans, flour, sunflower oil and more. All packs included a copy of Supreme Master Ching Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace. 150 families were happy to receive the relief supplies, as well as the warm and caring support from our team. Our many thanks to our United States Association members for providing funds, to the Johannesburg Center for thoughtfully carrying out the relief operation, and special thanks to the six-member crew for assisting with the distribution. May the region recover swiftly and all flood-affected residents return to their normal daily lives in God's merciful grace. United States helps provide nourishment for children in Kenya. The United States Agency for International Development, or USAID, has donated 3 million U.S. dollars each to the World Food Program and to the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, for specialized products to treat approximately 50,000 malnourished children up to the age of 5 in Kenya which is experiencing drought and reduced harvests. In addition, USAID is also collaborating with partners to provide affected communities with food, water, and cash support, as well as sanitation and hygiene services. Our respectful appreciation, USAID, for your timely assistance to our Kenyan sisters and brothers in heaven's immense mercy, may many precious lives be saved as extreme weather events become an occurrence of the past in a balanced and sustainable world. Eastern Mediterranean region countries now measles and rubella free. It was recently confirmed by the Regional Verification Commission for Measles and Rubella Elimination that Bahrain and Oman are completely free from measles and rubella, and Iran is free from rubella with measles almost eradicated. Congratulating the three countries, World Health Organization Regional Director for the Eastern Mediterranean, Dr. Ahmed Al-Mandari, stated, This gives us great hope and confidence that all countries in the region can do the same. Congratulations, Iran, Oman and Bahrain on your laudable accomplishment. May the people of the entire Eastern Mediterranean region flourish in good health, comfort and joy. In Allah's blessings. New report shows Australia's tremendous rooftop solar potential. Solar energy experts from three Australian institutions have calculated that the nation could host up to 179 gigawatts of rooftop solar which is over 20 times the current capacity. The report noted that expanding solar to this extent would enable the nation to generate more electricity than they currently consume. 
It will also allow the country, which is a Shining World Leadership Award for Compassion recipient, to use low-cost renewable energy to replace coal-fired plants in electricity generation and petroleum in industry and transportation. At present, solar accounts for just more than five percent of the total power generation. Sunny cheers to you, Australia! For this encouraging news, may your nation continue moving toward a future of 100% clean energy in God's light. Korean researchers successfully 3D print corneas for the eye. Engineers from Korea have successfully 3D printed corneas that are almost identical to the ones found in the eyes and may lead to successful artificial corneal transplants. The new corneas use human compatible cells and are printed using a special technique that allows the collagen fibrils to be arranged in a specific manner which facilitates good transparency and vision. Their method may lead to considerable relief for the estimated 12.7 million people worldwide awaiting corneal transplants. Much appreciation and praises, Korean scientists, for your diligent research to restore the sight of people in need. May your 3D printed corneas, as well as other remarkable medical advancements, help bring renewed happiness and improved lives to many in heaven's love. Eco-conscious woman diligently cleans Canadian beaches. For over a year, Karen Jenner has been typically going around two to three times a week to beaches near her home on the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia in eastern Canada to pick up plastic waste and other discarded items. She has brought home more than 2,400 metric tons worth of trash, such as ropes, toys, lighters, and much more since she began. After sorting and weighing the items, Miss Jenner then posts photographs of them on her Facebook page to help raise awareness of the extent of the issue. She has also inspired other people to conduct their own beach cleanups. Our accolades and gratitude, Karen Jenner, for your dedicated beach initiative. God bless you. May more people join in efforts to bring our world back to a vibrant and pristine state. Indian holy city of Varanasi takes steps to ban alcohol and non-vegetarian food. The Varanasi Municipal Corporation (VMC) approved a proposal for a total ban on alcohol and non-vegetarian food anywhere within 250 meters of heritage sites and temples in the revered Indian city. Varanasi has approximately 2,000 temples and also welcomes pilgrims who wish to bathe in the sacred Ganges River. The proposal to prohibit the harmful substances was presented by Councillor Rajesh Yadav, who suggested implementing the ban in a similar manner to the ones already in effect in the Indian cities of Haridwar and Ayodhya. Heaven bless you, Councillor Rajesh Yadav, and all others involved in this wise action. May the sacred city of Varanasi forever cherish its divine purity, created by sages and truth seekers from time immemorial. In heaven's unfolding grace and blessings. Free roaming horse in Germany wins hearts. Jenny, a 22-year-old Arabian mare from Fechimheim, district of Frankfurt, has been taking a daily unaccompanied walk for the last 14 years. Sharing equine love with those she encounters, her human companion, 79 year young Vena Vaishide, became no longer able to take Jenny for her walks and encouraged the intelligent horse to go on her own. He placed a note of explanation on her halter that reads, "My name is Jenny. I have not run away. Just going for a walk. Thanks." After people found out about Jenny through a social media posting, they wrote comments such as, "I love this story. 
thank the townspeople for their love of this amazing, wonderful horse. Jenny, you and your supportive community gladden our hearts. May you continue your amiable walks for years to come. Graciously greeting your friends in the divine's tender care.